Right then, we're almost ready, as I say. We're continuing our coverage of this uh, 23rd final here with Ronnie O'Sullivan and Steve Davis. What a start. Two centuries by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Back came Davis. 3-1. The They're just about ready to start. And down there is the MC, Norman de Mosquito. Of which those of you who are staying on for this evening will take advantage. And now let's welcome back players Ronnie O'Sullivan and Steve Davis. Down there. The man who's made all the history over the years and back here again in the final, which he is reveling in, I can tell you. And Ronnie Thank O'Sullivan, you, who said, the I really want to play Steve Davis Ronnie here at Wembley. But he's doing it and leading 3 1. Coverage continues now with John Virgo and Clive Everton. A 20 minute interval has elapsed and both players have uh, the problem of uh, getting their concentration well and truly glued together. Davis having sat out the first two frames, two centuries from O'Sullivan, won the third, played at much more his chosen tactical pace. And uh, was also well in the fourth until uh, he was trapped in a snooker and uh, O'Sullivan made a winning 49 from it. Terrific safety shot from Steve. And an attacking one. He was playing a thin contact off the red. He was opening them up. Yeah, Ronnie look. can get through to reds, but he can't hit one, it seems to me, at an angle that could get the cue ball back in the balk end. Ronnie's just telling John Street <laughs> what ball he's playing in case they have to be replaced. <laughs> he was a good judge to say it. It would definitely be called a miss. Foul four and a miss. Steve Davis. Because he can hit reds and on well, the way he played that, he may well be able to get back to Bork off a very thin contact. But he's got to be mighty thin. And I think Ronnie was just... Mention it to John Street, so he was uh, aware, or should be aware, of where the cue ball was. Steve? The problem is, if he catches it too thick, he'll catch the red near the right corner pocket. Oh, but that was a good shot. Um, well, what can you say about a shot like that? Absolutely perfect. I think that uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan has a very good safety game and this season is using it more. Foul four and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Yes, people shouting out, go on, Ronnie, go on, Steve. As long as they don't do on the shot, it's not too bad. Obviously, this is a, an exciting match. And 
Steve will take it on his stride, as I'm certain Ronnie will. Ronnie? Steve basically left with the same problem that Ronnie had. If he catches it too thick, he catches a red near the right cushion. And keeps the cue ball at this end, the danger end. Got it thin, maybe a little bit too thin, but it looks reasonably safe. Perfectly directed again. Yes, and you notice the tap on the table from Steve Davis appreciating that shot. And, well, I think Steve probably thought he'd got out of trouble with his last shot, but he's in deeper trouble now. Well, just looking at a line that Steve could go, I think really he's looking to come to one of those two reds by the black. Oh, he's hit that all wrong. Foul five and a miss, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Straight red left, so O'Sullivan not taking the miss. One. not available so I'm going to go on the black spot he didn't get straight enough on that red trying to run off another red for good position on the pink but he's not got it eight Ronnie O'Sullivan in the first two frames every time he got a chance at a red he, he won the frame with two centuries Game's not that easy though, all the time. Steve trying to pick out the best red to get him back to the balk end. But of course there's always pressure on these shots, particularly when you're playing a, a potter of Ronnie O'Sullivan's ability. You know you've got to get it really safe. Good shot. So Davis traps O'Sullivan into a mistake. Key shot coming up here. The 
black and the blue are out of commission. He needs his pink on the spot, but in potting the pink, he's going to be running into the red near the right-hand cushion. So he needs a little bit of good fortune here. Well, it could have come out better than that. I think he has got a red on into the right corner, but... Bought the red, but not straightforward for position. Didn't hold the cue ball as he would like. 14. So it's going to be a good shot now to keep this going. Yes, if uh, he had uh, held the pink more sharply, he would have had uh, a straightish red to right corner. Well, was that uh, a bit impetuous? Yes, but it was an interesting tactic there from Steve Davis. He knew he'd believe in that red. I remember Ray Reardon used to play similar type of shots against Alex Higgins, leaving him tempters. The percentage was in Steve's favour that he wouldn't get a red like that. Now, can he take advantage of it? You can't One. always play the perfect safety shot and not leave your opponent a chance, but if you leave him a chance, and it's a real difficult one. And you know the attacking nature of your opponent. It's not a bad ploy. It worked in that instant. Seven. over a red for the red that he's going to take and therefore can't maneuver the cue ball as he would like Not as difficult as uh, at first appeared. Well, I think to be fair, Clive, he made it look easy. He had to really strike that ball well, and he's got a perfect angle on the pink. what Steve ideally would like is to bring the black into play. In fact, the black is stopping a couple of reds from going in the left corner. The sooner he gets the black on the spot, the better. 50.
23. A little short of uh, his intended position. Wanted to be able to bring the cue ball slightly towards his next red. Wanted to be on this pink three quarter ball the other way. Well, if this red past the blue, you'd be playing the pot and back to the balk end. Shot for nothing. Oh. 29. He envisaged getting it closer Steve to the Bates. pocket than that. It didn't rattle the jaws. <laughs> So it came back up the table with the cue ball. Some sideways movement on the shot there. Thank you, gentlemen, please. Sullivan still trails by 30. Dave is having to give this some thought because uh, that red that Sullivan attempted has rebounded in such a way that Davis is snookered on it. Steve knew he was leaving a possible <coughs> pot on a red. A very risky shot to play into the left corner, the one on the left-hand side of that cluster. It's the type of shot, though, that Ronnie O'Sullivan could take on. Well, that time the, the calculated risk didn't one. work. What a good pot that was, and he's finished well on the colour. going to be easy for O'Sullivan to clear up in one though. Two reds on the cushion behind the black, another on the fork cushion. Fifteen. Well this isn't the red he played for and these are tricky. Sixteen. And didn't he play it well though and with a lot of confidence. Eighteen. Nineteen. Well, that was an excellent positional shot, but as you say, Clive, this is where the problems are going to start. He's got on this red, but of course, we've got the two awkward reds on the top cushion. But with this young man, well, you couldn't be certain that anything was safe.
27. Yes, great shot. And also the pace he played it. He was a bit too hard. The Reds could have gone away from the cue ball, but he just did it so well and developed both Reds. 33. Over from nowhere, a frame winning chance. Sullivan. He'd done so much of the hard work. Yes, but I've, we've seen so many times this week, Clive, that those shots, particularly what we call a blind pocket, where you're aiming at the ball and the, the pocket isn't in your eye line, and you just catch the jaw and they don't go in. That's a championship table, and that's how they should be. As you say, done all the hard work and it looks a formality if it had potted this red. One. Still by no means all hope lost for O'Sullivan though. Blue awkwardly placed. Green pretty awkward as well at the moment. Well, I think Steve there was trying to pot the yellow to leave an angle on the yellow so he could pot the yellow and disturb the green. But Three. He won't be disturbing the green now. In fact, looking just to pot the yellow and maybe leave a double on the green. Points are level. I think if the blue was in the open, I don't think he'd play the double, but the blue is an insurance for him. Well, as much as you can get with someone like Ronnie. So he may elect to play the double. As you see, undecided. Steve Davis. Much greater certainty of laying a snooker rather than attempting the speculative double. Foul. Four. Steve Davis. But the escape attempt near enough to to satisfy the referee, John Street. No call of miss. No option for Davis to have the cue ball replaced behind the black. <laughs> Davis has, however, exercised one of his, of his other options. He's put O'Sullivan in again. <laughs> Use the brown to keep the cue ball down by the ball cushion. Yes, and he made it look that easy. You wonder why Steve didn't elect to play the shot. Steve with a more difficult safety now. Played it well. Don't think O'Sullivan played the pot. <coughs> Just over 24 minutes, the longest frame of the match. Certainly more Davis's tempo than O'Sullivan's. Well, it's 
terrific safety shot. She's got down to play this very quick, Ronnie. It doesn't look straightforward to me. But just the pace of the green well. A natural eye. had the idea of using the brown to keep the cue ball by the book cushion but uh, he didn't get the green down far enough <coughs> and uh, has also gone in off yes he's only saviour Ronnie he's 10 points in front Steve but he still needs the awkward blue the green and brown should be a formality but he desperately needs a good angle on the brown off this green to try and get behind to say what will be the awkward blue three now a lot could depend on where he finishes on the brown he doesn't want to finish on the cushion well can he dig into this I think if he's going to play any shot here Steve he's got to try and pot the brown and cannon the blue into a more favorable position he can't just drop the brown in and hold for the blue. So it's digging in, trying to cannon the blue into the open. Seven. <coughs> Didn't quite make it. 18 still on the table and only 17 in front. Yes, I think under normal circumstances you still think Steve Davis was favourite of this frame, Clive, because of his superior tactics. But as we've seen today and during this tournament, Ronnie's just a good safety player now. But the double will sort it out. <laughs> yes, Davis sends for the That was the moment to try the double. Played it with the modicum of safety in mind. The pink made sure the cue ball was going towards the ball pocket but didn't drop in it. So Davis crucially wins the fifth frame. That uh, reduces his deficit to 3 2. 4 1 would have been looking serious. Sullivan possibly casting his mind back on uh, on a few of the uh, chances that he had uh, in that frame but now he's got to think about the next frame that will be Steve Davis just uh, walking out of the arena there after that big effort it was uh, a big frame indeed and to put into perspective how well he's done to get here take a look at what he's been doing this season the answer is uh, not an awful lot quarter-final of the Asian Classic there and then uh, really not too much to shout about out in round three of the UK German Open Charity Challenge Regal Welsh compared to Ronnie uh, it's a totally different story because Ronnie O'Sullivan this year has been flying champion in the Asian quarter-final of the Regal there champion of the German Open runner-up in that charity challenge that of course was the one where Stephen Hendry pulled the final frame with a 147 in the last frame so he really is the form player this season but uh, I think that matters too much Dennis because the adrenaline Davis will have got from getting here is immense yes and and that frame was such a big frame if Ronnie had have nicked that frame off him to go 4-1 mm. in front you could have said it, it, it might have been all over, but and Steve knows how important that was, and he risked the double, and it was the right choice. Yeah, it was a shot. brave shot. This blue wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, I mean, he really went for it because really. he played it in such a way as he, he would possibly get a snooker if he if he didn't double the blue, and he knew he only needed it, and uh, made the right choice to shot there. 
and we've got a terrific uh, round of applause. He's got a lot of support here, has uh, Steve. Well, I tell you what, I'm beginning to think this massive crowd here could pass here behind Steve Davis. Ronnie always said, this is my patch, but they've certainly warmed to this uh, legend, the master, back in here. And an intriguing final. I mean, it's the old and still good versus the new and very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The sixth frame, Steve Davis to break. I think everyone in snooker admires the total commitment which uh, Steve Davis has retained to snooker. He really does love this game and he's hungry still for more success. used uh, the second ball to stop the first one returning towards the bork area as he screwed back yes we had steve just before he sat down having a very close look there may be a plant rocket ronnie's looking at it now i was going to call him rocket ronnie which is his nickname he certainly started off like a rocket today there you see it it's not quite on and the angle he's approaching it, I think it'd be a very risky shot to try it. Didn't take the risk from once again. Look at the length. This is for a young man who everybody assumed was just a potter. Not so. Yes, just compare O'Sullivan's quality of safety play at the age of 21 with how uh, another amazing natural talent, Jimmy White, played at that age. He didn't have anything like that safety game on a consistent basis. Yes, and of course that's why the likes of Jimmy White used to struggle against Steve because Steve used to tie Jimmy up in knots. Jimmy was okay when he got in amongst the balls but you have to compete in the safety exchanges. And Ronnie also has been certainly doing that. I don't like to say we've got a classic match because it's early doors but at the moment we've got everything. We've got great potting, great break building, great tactical game. As David Vine says, the young and up and coming against the Grand Master, shall we call him. And throw in.
attempted the plant in the end. Positional shot uh, from O'Sullivan. Didn't intend to cannon the green. Well recovered though. Six. Thirteen. Fourteen. Well, lovely shot that was. When you play a shot like that, it's all about feel. It's not in the textbook. It's in your head. Twenty-two. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. And in the pink in, and back on its spot, opens the lap for the two corner pockets. Forty-five. Frame winning chance. Developing two more reds. 52. While certain to finish on another. 53. 60. Well, that's unusual for Ronnie to a bad positional shot when he's nicely in around the black. He's not home yet in this frame. 60 points in front, there's still a possible 83 left on the table. And this is a tricky shot, he's playing with the spider. Yes, it's not just... Uh a point. question of dabbing in a little straight one. Well, this isn't an easy implement to use. Now he's looking at one into the far left corner now because of the awkward missing queuing. But this isn't easy. Yes, cue ball and that red so close together that uh, it's very delicate to screw back from it. 
and also pretty difficult to judge the potting angle. Well, I think this is a problem. Ronnie thought this was a frame winning opportunity and he still wants it to be one. He's trying to curb his natural aggression. I think a safety shot has got to be the shot to play here. Sixty. Ronnie O'Sullivan. He didn't want to play safe, but in the end he did. <laughs> and I'm sure that was the wise decision. Why risk throwing away most or even all that 60 point lead? closer and he knows that but he also knows now that surely that's end of frame one so the safety shot as it turned out was the right shot to play for Ronnie eight Nine. So, Davis needs a snooker. Sixteen. Seventeen. And uh, O'Sullivan is going to recapture a two-frame lead. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Well, speed it up now. John Street having a joke. Thirty-nine. Balls on the pocket. <laughs> But the crowd love it. And don't we all? It's great stuff. 45. 46. 49. 51. Davis uh, watching this uh, 54. half century which was reached in only two minutes, five seconds. 58. 63. 63 in the frame. What a star. Breaks of 60 and 63, separated by a judicious safety shot enable Ronnie O'Sullivan to regain a two-frame lead at 4-2. Break-making, of course, O'Sullivan's forte. There we see his match statistics. The, the two centuries with which uh, he opened this contest, 116 and 113, a couple of half-centuries, a couple of thirties, but as we've seen, a much more mature uh, tactical player uh, than he was a year or so ago. Well, if you were with us uh, earlier this afternoon, we just touched on in the commentary previous meetings between uh, these two. There have just been three of them, in fact. There they are, Ronnie O'Sullivan winning in that famous quarter-final of 93 in the UK, when, of course, he went on to win the title, beating Stephen Hendry, being that youngest winner. 
and also beat him in the 93 European Open quarter final. There's the win, though, of Steve Davis, and the last time they played, and that was uh, in the Irish Masters, a quarter-final five turn. In fact, they played quite a few times in the European League, and uh, they played four times there, and Davis has beaten Ronnie 3-1. Um, what do we read into that, Dennis? I mean, they're conscious of when they played against each other, obviously. Well, I think you, you read into it the fact that Steve Davis is, as we keep saying, such a good tactical player, and he can upset Ronnie's rhythm. But when Ronnie starts playing like that, you can't do anything about it. Mm. So uh, it's just fascinating stuff to watch because you don't know what's going to happen the next frame. You're actually saying John Street was in training there to be a bingo caller, wasn't he? Well, when Ronnie starts playing like that, you'd think you were listening to a bingo <laughs> caller, yeah. I mean, it is amazing, so the way he can put those shots together. And he suddenly seems, he has a little patch here and there where he thinks about it, and suddenly he thinks, this is it, I'm going, and he just turns it on. And at times, you know, you talk about stance in the game, isn't it? Ronnie falls at the table sometimes, and he just plays the shot, and he's not stood proper. Mm. He's just such a natural. 4-2. Mm. And brilliant snooker. And so much to sort of watch and think about in the changing pattern. We said uh, when they came together, would it be a dream final? Well, it's reality. My goodness, it's great Sunday afternoon entertainment. Hope you agree with me. All four. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Having gone in off. Davis would have much preferred Thank you, Ganwen. if the red had also dropped in instead of giving O'Sullivan such an easy starter. One. Eight. Nine. It was funny there, when he, just before he played the red, before the black, he wasn't certain what he was going to play, but never got up, played it quick. Sixteen, Ronnie um, O'Sullivan. A little bit of lack of concentration there, and if he's covered this red, he's very fortunate. Sullivan. Swerving the cue ball, Davis was uh, afraid, I think, of overdoing it. And in the end, underdid the swerve, didn't strike the red. One. We have a loose red, which 99% of the players Seven. would have played for. And, well, it was such, a, such a brilliant shot coming off three cushions, opened up the reds. Anything could happen now. Twelve. Didn't get through off the second and third balls as he wanted. Of course, that's the problem with playing quick. I think he played the wrong red. I think he should have played the other red. He was certainly getting position. He could have left that awkward 13. red running into Ronnie the other balls till, till later. So that speed, even though it's nice to watch, can just catch himself out occasionally.
one. Right. Well, didn't play that too well, Steve, and he needs a good pot now. Six. That's the problem, you see, when the pot is difficult, you wear on the side of safety as well, and that's when you run out of position. So just a little trickle up behind the yellow. Six, Steve Davis. Davis competing very keenly, but it is noticeable that uh, he's only made one break over 30. That's the 46 with which uh, he clinched the third frame. O'Sullivan scoring much more heavily when he gets in. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, that close. Steve having a close look. The referee hasn't given a touching ball. I know Steve would like it to be one. And he's still not sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was a second ago, I can promise you. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? <laughs> well, in the end, the referee, John Street, <coughs> agreed with Steve Davis. Now, two explanations are possible. Either he was wrong in the first place, or the cue ball was just... Uh, rock back into the red. Anyway, whatever, it makes it easier to get safe. He's looking for a spot behind that yellow again. We are staying with our live coverage of this uh, Benson Hedges Masters final from Wembley, which means that Ski Sunday will follow this programme. Well, Davis played such a good safety from uh, his last shot that I wonder what all the fuss was about the touching ball. One. Yes, I think he just wanted that option, Clive, if he, he needed the touching ball. And then the more he thought about it, it was a chance to bring a few reds out in the open. But as you say, it was a good safety. He just did well behind the yellow. Now, what can he make of this chance? He may, in potting this blue, just be able to cannon into those three reds just to the left of the black. It would help to bring them into play. Now, how has it finished? Finished well. Six.
choice of two easy reds. Yes, you'll have to play for the pink and blue. The black isn't available at the moment. Wouldn't be such a bad thing to get the pink on its spot. Seven. That's okay. I'm playing for the red below the pink spot. We'll clear the black for the left corner. Thirteen. So apart from that one awkward red near the left-hand cushion, this is an excellent chance now. Fourteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Well, I'm sure Steve's there. Would have liked to have been on the black. Maybe he didn't have the angle on the red. If he clears the black, it makes the two reds easily available. But as I say. The open reds aren't going to be the problem. He's going to need that red near the left-hand cushion. Twenty-eight. So now he can get the black on the spot. Thirty-six. Didn't play it well. It looks straightforward, that shot, but it isn't. You're stunning across the table. And depending how much stun you get on it, whether you take the pace out of the cue ball, and it's just gone slightly wrong. You should still pot it and play for the, the red into the same pocket as the black. I fancy him potting it as long as he's not using the rest. If he's using the rest, then it's a more difficult shot. Pink's not really a good shot to get position on a red. Looks at the scoreboard. He's five points in front. I think he's got to stretch for the black here. That red just to the left of the black will pass the black when it's respotted for the right corner. But he doesn't think he can reach it. And he knows if he, he can't reach it and has to play it with the rest, then it's a lot more difficult shot. responded in this match after the barrage you suffered in the first two frames now importantly gets a good angle off this red on the black to disturb that awkward three. red just a reminder that we are staying with the snooker here at Wembley and Ski Sunday will follow later
wanted the cue ball 50. on the side cushion to attempt the red to the corner. I'd be surprised if he attempted it from this angle. Fifty, Steve Davis. Well, that was a good shot from Ronnie. He had a very close look. Steve can get just get past the black and hit the red thin. He'll be okay. And obviously he can. and the fact that when Ronnie was walking back to his seat he apologised to Steve so Steve obviously can't get through to this red and there you see it but I'm sure he'll try the pot coming off the right hand cushion first forced into it One. Unlucky anywhere but there. So 20 Touching points in front. Touching the blue. If he potted the pink, which is a tough shot, he'd still need the awkward yellow. Of course, what he could do pink ball. is put the pink safe. As a bit of insurance, should Ronnie also even get a chance? Blue ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think Steve actually did say pink, but he meant to say blue. <coughs> Touching, of course, just fire away. As I say, it might be a good idea just to put the pink safe. He's nominated blue, but he's deemed to have hit it far and away. Okay. Pink ball. Pink. <laughs> well, if he's, if he's nominated pink, maybe he's going for the pot. You see... The problem is, for Steve, I think what he's thinking, if, if he's trying to send the pink round the angles into a safe position, if it did go in, by nominating pink, he'd get six points. If he nominates blue and the pink goes in, then it would be a foul shot. If you can understand that, it's pretty simple, really. That was the reason, because if the pink had gone in the middle, he'd have got six points. But if it had nominated blue and the pink had gone in, then it would have been a foul. Well, Ronnie swerved, but he's not left anything easy for Steve. Steve needs the yellow and green. Does he fully commit on this yellow? a brave shot if he did. It would be asking for trouble to 
play this shot slowly from this distance against the nap. And the bed of the table is pretty swift. I mean, we, we look at the situation of the table, Clive. Even though Steve's 20 points in front, if Ronnie also even got a chance, you'd think he'd be favourite to take the frame, so big shot this. Played it as slowly as he dared. But it was a tough shot, that. Overhit this. Ooh, it's all right, just. Didn't play the pot there. Was always cutting the yellow to safety. Cushion. Just enough, I think. Could be cut in this, but I don't think it's a shot you'd want to play. To me that was completely out of character for Steve Ooh. to attempt. He went for it and what a fluke. And surely with only the green required it's won him this frame. Five.
25, Steve Davis. But not before he'd gone 25 in front with 22 on the table. Four. So he's shown us a lot today, Ronnie. Great building, great potting, good safety. What can he do now? He needs a snooker. Four, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Didn't risk uh, cutting that blue thin at speed for fear of the in off. Just having to swerve this slightly with right hand side. to rip this I don't think there's a straightforward angle so there you go potting break building safety and when it comes to getting snookers he gets full marks for that one a combination of black and middle pocket in the way from the right hand side of the table Ronnie O'Sullivan. So O'Sullivan back in the frame. Only 16 in front now, Davis. 18 on the table. Three times Davis has been two frames behind. Twice he's reduced the deficit to a single frame and looked like doing so for a third time when O'Sullivan needed a snooker but uh, you can't be certain about that now yes and he'll kick himself Steve Davis if he loses this could he flute the yellow he potted the green he had an easy brown and he didn't pot the brown I'm sure if he'd have potted the brown Ronnie would have conceded but he missed the brown and now a lot of pressure on this safety this is going to need a good shot. Well, he's lucky. Double kiss. It's not got him out of the woods, but at least it's safe. And that's the main thing at the moment. Oh, but this is another terrific shot from Ronnie. Steve can get through to hit the blue, but Ronnie's put him in all kinds of trouble yet again. The double kiss again. Yeah, ball with the blue. Blue, yeah. And this time, not such a favourable outcome. Quiet, please. A 
a crowd disturbance, or at least one member of the crowd. I can't help you with any details. made uh, that uh, rifle blue just a little bit more difficult so Davis wins the frame after all he still trails though by four frames to three and that's brought us up to the end of our live afternoon here at Wembley it looks like an intriguing night ahead of us 12 more frames to play we're live all the way from 7.30 had it all haven't we two centuries in the opening frames a streaker see if I can get the producer to invite her in here after the watershed <laughs> whatever happens live to the finish 7.30